Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 56 of the Cloud Computing Training Show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about that the race is on as DevOps is all the rage in the IT industry with some great job opportunities for the right qualified candidates. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you back on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back. And this is something I'm seeing a lot of, so I'm glad we're addressing it. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, opening question. Is DevOps, do you think, moving too fast to really find effective training? Yeah, I mean, I got a, a story. I mean, I was working on a DevOps project uh, a couple of years ago, and um, I basically had to get back in and kind of assess the project every couple of weeks. And every couple of weeks that I came back in there, they had a different tool chain uh, set up, and they changed at least 20% of it each time I peeked in. And uh, and so the people were trying to keep up and getting, uh, you know, training in Ansible and, you know, the continuous integration stuff and servers and things like that and chef and puppet and, and and bamboo and all these sorts of things but they're shifting so fast that it was very difficult for me to get people trained up in the tool sets going forward and finally i said listen look i said we're going to have agile training as far as an agile methodology which means everybody has to read the book and get the online training on their own as we move forward and change these tool sets and it came to the point where I really couldn't point them to anywhere on the web where there was formal training uh, that was up to date with everything that they needed. I really couldn't point them to any institutions that were teaching it. Certainly they weren't doing it in the college and universities. And so, again, we get back to the fact that the most valuable people you can hire are people who are self, self-taught and self-learning, kind of a passionate for doing that. And we're at a point right now where DevOps is just moving so fast, I really want you to understand the basic concepts of what DevOps is and what a DevOps tool chain is and what a process is and you know how it integrates with Agile and uh, you know how to do code drops and continuous testing and all that kind of stuff. Get the concepts down right, and there's plenty of places to go to look that. But as far as the detailed technology and how you implement it, it's changing so fast and changing all the time. And by the way, everything that was mentioned about the tool chains and also the methodologies and the ability to kind of bind it to Agile that changes too. You know, we have better ideas. We're continuously improving stuff. So, this is a world where you know people are drinking the agile Kool Aid, but ultimately the agile Kool Aid needs to be applied to training as well. And so, we're getting to a point where just-in-time training probably isn't just in time anymore. We're going to have to basically get good at um, you know getting people you know up to speed uh, with this stuff as quickly as they can and having them do it on their own. So it really, and so you become kind of a provider of uh, money and time, you know, giving them time to go off and train to understand and learn things, more so than a provider of um, of some sort of a training plan. So I know I, in DevOps world, it's very difficult to train anybody just because of the speed in which things are moving, other than the ba- very basics we just talked about. So you have to be a facilitator and you have to kind of set them up to get the information they need to be effective at their jobs and not necessarily trying to shove a training plan down their, down their throats. It's not productive anymore. So that's the way it is right now. It may not be that way in a couple of years when things settle down, but um, right now every DevOps tool chain is different, every DevOps methodology is every DevOps um, you know, SDLC is different. You know, all these sorts of things are different. The way in which they apply agile, continuous integration, continuous um, uh, deployment, all those things are different kind of strategies and technologies. And so I hesitate to really kind of level in on one set of tools or one set of processes. Yeah, like you say, there's just so much choice out there and everything is relatively unique and bespoke to the projects that are in hand, aren't they? And as you've experienced, you know, things tend to change, um, you know, every every time. I know from your experience, you've just mentioned that every time you've, you've, you've stepped into a project, again, the tool sets have changed. So would, would, would it be right to sort of look at this from a point of view of someone coming in as uh, looking at opportunities in DevOps to say, right, let me find a case study of what was, uh, you know, the typical tools used historically for a certain type of project, Uh, within a certain type of industry um, and and then sort of emulate that and learn as much around that as possible for them to at least get their foot in the door because that's kind of the way you know in a a kind of an ideology of of, of trying to break into a new industry I would approach that what are your thoughts? No I think that's a great point and what I tell people if they're trying to break into DevOps um, number one you, you should know some sort of development language and understand how to build stuff 
But number two is um, look at the you know top three tools and the continuous uh, uh, continuous integration tools, configuration management tools, continuous testing tools, things like that, and learn them. Learn at least one of them in each of the categories. You don't have to learn all of them, and I think it'd be dumb if you learned all of them. And so. When you get into the organization, even though they may not be using the tools that you've, you've learned, which the chances are that's going to be the case, you understand what a, what a configuration management tool is and what a continuous, test, what a continuous testing tool is, uh, and you're able to basically adapt the concepts that you understand around the tools around anything that comes down the line. And so that will provide you a basis of understanding to be fairly successful at the job, and also people who are hiring understand that you understand those tools, you understand an instance of them, they not, may not be using any of them, but they may use that as a validation criteria to make sure you can understand other tools and get up and running in their stuff. And, and by the way, be prepared to become a quick learner because you're gonna get a lot of technology thrown at you, specifically if you're a DevOps engineer and you need to figure out uh, how you continuously improve the tools, what the tools do, and the marketplace, you know, it's probably the most challenging jobs in IT right now as someone who's actually running a DevOps engineering organization and basically trying to keep up with the best of breed stuff. Yeah, it truly is. It's a very fast moving and very pressurized. And, and like you say, you've got to be an autodidact to be able to be continually learning and know, you know, where you should be learning without being, you know, totally fed all the time, uh, some sort of educational program. And there are some great courses out there, aren't there, online to give people a, at least a foundation on on what they need to be learning, which in effect is then going to spur them onto a more in-depth thing and a more hands-on approach. So um, we can obviously add a, a link to this 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 uh, video actually in the description box so people can find some great courses. I think you've done some courses on this as well, haven't you, and Linda? Yeah, I've done a couple of DevOps courses on lynda.com, but it was basic stuff. And so it was uh, uh, beginner, intermediate stuff and dealing with architectures and things like that and not too much on the tool sets. And the thing, if you write a book or do a video or do anything these days, if you put any kind of technology in the course, that's going to mean it's ever brown. As soon as it, you know, three months out, it's going to be dated, ready to go. If you're trying to keep something evergreen, which means it's going to be valuable for at least a couple, three years, you have to kind of remove the technology, which people want the technology details. But if you're writing a course or writing a book, you want the book and the course to be downloaded and read. And also you focus on the basic concepts. So that's what I did. Yeah, well, exactly. Look, we'll put the link uh, below for David's training on Linda. So if anyone wants to check out that, that's cool. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, you want to be, it's such a fast pace of education within DevOps that there's a lot of brown brown information out there, as you said. Um, I mean, you know, I think I saw, a, I think I saw a book in a, a charity shop the other day, sort of, uh, you know, MySpace for Dummies. Um, and, and I just thought, <laughs> I thought, why would you buy a, a book? You know, it's about 50 cents or something. Um, but anyway, it was a bad joke, obviously. Um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll move swiftly on to your, uh, your top, three di top three tips there, Dave, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, number one, keep trends in mind, not current technology. And so you have to understand what all of the changes mean in terms of where the trends are moving. And utilization of cognitive uh, computing and DevOps is an now push, as well as uh, special purpose databases, uh, um, the ability to kind of leverage them for serverless technology. So what does that mean in terms of what you need to do and take the technology in a certain way? Um, focus on working. So we need to kind of look at DevOps as something that's very pragmatic. And pragma pragmatism is really kind of the value that DevOps brings. We try to remove any kind of inefficiencies around building soft, building, deploying software. And we're continuously trying to make that faster and better, you know, better of a process. And so focus on what's working in the industries right now and what people are leveraging and what seems to be effective. That seems to be the, the best thing you can do. And if that's a certain technology set, it's okay if you take a deep dive in that technology set and understand what it is. Even if it's not used, again, you get the patterns, you get the understanding of how that technology works, which you can apply to other technologies and other tools. DevOps training is likely uh, to be from many sources. And so it's going to be books, it's going to be blogs, it's going to be... Um, uh, it's going to be, um, you know, chat ops, you know, back and forth. More people understand tools and technology through, you know, leveraging Slack and other chat ops things when, when they're actually just going back and forth and understanding and asking questions as to, you know, how this stuff works. And so it's multidimensional and it can't come from a single source. And so 
the days of a classroom, even the days of having a single video portal for all the uh, training you're looking to do are over. Um, you need to get wiggy with your training program. You need to understand your information system is going to come out of all directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I, I'm, I'm liking the term you've got to get wiggy with it. Yeah, you got to be creative and innovative around this stuff or you're going to fail. That's just the way it is. It's yeah. actually a term, Wig, wiggy with it. Wiggy with it. I didn't make that up, by the way. I heard that from somebody else. <laughs> jiggy with it. Is it jiggy? Jiggy. <laughs> I heard wiggy. It's probably wiggy on the East Coast, jiggy on the, on the West Coast. Always jiggy on the West Coast. <laughs> Sorry, we've digressed. Dave, look, thanks for your top tips and thanks for being part of the training show this week. A very insightful show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> and thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Lincoln. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. You can get us on LinkedIn as well. I don't mention that enough, but you can connect with us. We love to connect with everyone on LinkedIn. As long as you don't mention the shiny objects of blockchain too much, we'll be absolutely probably happy to connect with you. Um, but yeah, no, check us out on all the social media as well. David writes some great blogs. Everything for the social media and the blogs is in the description box below. So check that out. Be a part of what we're doing. Make sure you subscribe to the blogs. They're pretty awesome. Uh, David writes exclusively for us for these blogs as well. So they're, they're, they're really cool. Um, and yeah, you know, share this channel and comment. We, we like to get the feedback. And, uh, you know, we really love all the support we get online as well with all our social media. So that's really important to us. Um, and thanks for watching. And until next week. <laughs>